Hello and welcome to Conquering Mom Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today is Free Pattern Friday. That's right, FPF, not FPP. It means something else in quilting. But Free Pattern Friday. And today we have promised our viewers the header quilt is uh, the black and rainbow colored quilt that's part of my uh, YouTube channel and my Facebook group and all this stuff. It's called Rippling Goose. And it was a pattern that I came up with for a crib quilt for my granddaughter. So today we're going to start part one. So this is going to be Free Pattern Friday part one, part two, part three, part four, where part four we put it all together. So right now grab your, I'm grabbing like two and a half inch strips because I have them and crumbs, like larger size crumbs because my crumbs are about hand size. So that is going to be a fun sewing day. But first, I want to talk to you about the guy who sews. His name is Sean. And Sean has a YouTube channel here. And his stuff is lots of fun. And he does some longer sew dates. And he does short little quips where he just shows a, a block. But he does neat stuff. So I would love you to check him out. I'm going to put his YouTube channel below. Also, we have a Facebook group. We would love it for you to to join the, our Facebook group because we're, we're right now we're offering uh, one virtual so date a month with everybody in the group and myself and we do polls so while we're filming this I don't know if we'll have decided on the October so date yet or not but you know please join and you know then your input is there right so but it's majority rules as to what day they want uh, the pattern for Rippling Goose is going to also be in the show notes and so go look below, see where it says show more. Then you, you open up the pattern, you download the pattern, then you, you should be able to open the pattern and print it. If you can't print it, then you might need a zip drive or something. I'll get my IT guy to help. Okay, let's get to the sewing. Okay, so what you've got to do is pick a background. Now I'm picking black. And then I'm going to pick two different reds, two different purples, two different blues, two different greens, and one different yellow. And the yellow is always running across the middle in all of these blocks. And you go green, blue, purple, and red. So basically what you want to do is you want to cut two reds. Now I go make sure I've got lots of room on either side of these things. I'm, I'm not going to sit there and struggle. I have to make, when you're doing this, you gotta remember you're making 35 blocks, right? So all your reds are gonna be all different. All your you know, greens and all the rest of this are gonna be different. It's only when you get to the orange in the corners that that's where it starts to, oh, I guess I gotta figure out something else to do, right? <laughs> so now what I do is I normally just pick the same black and I try not to have the salvage in the work. I'm just not a big fan of salvage. Now I'm just using two and a half inch strips because that's what I have. So this is where we're going to go. Like one goes, okay. So one goes here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure by lining this up, right? From the back, because you can see it, right? where one and two have to go together. So now I've got this kind of, you can kind of pin it to in place. Pinning, however, does curve your work. So if you're doing a lot of pinning, it will, it'll distort your work, right? So it makes the work go like this now from the back, but that shouldn't be too, too terrible. Just when you're doing a longer seam, there's easier ways of, you. You, people sometimes they end up doing two. There. There we go. Now let's just run this right across. There we go. And I go a little bit past the edge. And there we go. Now, you would do several at once. You wouldn't just do one at a time, right? Like, so you would do all the one twos, all the, you know, the threes, and then all the fours, right? So, now, this is going to fold backwards like this, because that's black. That first one is always going to be black. And then, you want to pull out your add-a-quarter ruler, 
because it is all paper piecing and you would want a little bit extra you know you don't want too much bulk in this quilt i mean i made it for a quilt a crib quilt so i mean sometimes depending on how big i'm going to make my blocks is how you know like this is big enough to go back into my crumbs and i'm going to do three and four at the same time because i know that they're both black and sometimes you have to pull this a little bit to just to maneuver it there we go so i would save that <clears throat> those little cut off ends so now i've got good place as to where to put my three and three is always going to be on this side so I grab an another piece of black and I run my black from okay the side down this side and down right so I want to go a little bit pass where I need to be if your pieces are too big that's fine because you just trim them right I mean all of my stuff now in my stash is pretty much up for grabs so it's like whatever I want to do here I can if all I wanted to do was make a you know oh, okay now we'll just go up we'll go right along the line and then a quarter inch past there we go, and then we'll pull it out, clipping our threads. And like that. Now, as you go through this, you'll find that, you know, your little bits, your little bits, it's more interesting to look at when you're doing a scrappy quilt if you don't have a bunch more of this plain stuff going in. So you want to pick a different black now to you know put beside it on the other side it's just the way I don't know scrappy quilts I mean if you put the same black up against the same black what happens after a while is it starts to look very predictable and it's not necessarily a fun quilt so I'm just going to estimate here as to what I need put it down put it down let me just make sure that's nice and flat and, and we're just going to be like a quarter inch over. So here we go. I'm going to put that back under to get four sewn on. Okay. There we go. Right to the center like that. Quarter inch past. And now... You put purple on. Okay. Okay, so now you're going to open this up. Everything's nicely covered, right? You're going to take your little magic wand. <laughs> I like this. You're going to take your little magic wand, and now you're going to make your first elongated goose. And your elongated goose is going to be purple. There we go, just like that. Get our add a quarter ruler in. Put it along our line. And a rotary cutter. There we go. And there. Nice. Nicely done. So now we're going to add our purple through. You can see you have a perfect little quarter inch divot here. Right? So when you're adding your purple in, okay, now you're going to add your purple in. And that's going to end up being just right. Just the right place. Just the right color, right place, right everything. Okay. And now I'm just going to give it a quick, okay, once over right there. Okay. So you just rough trim them, right? So you don't have to worry about where it is. But you want it approximately halfway, and I make a little finger press halfway, I want to line up with that divot right there. And that helps me stay kind of centered 
as to where I need to be. So now I move all of this out of the way and I put this under very carefully and now I'm going to sew line five. And I want to make sure it stays. Yep, it's all good. Now as I'm sewing across, I want to make sure that that divot is perfectly meets up so I have a perfect little point on my red goose. So here we go like this. There we go, just like so. Just like that. Very quick. Very quick. Now I'm going to take this, turn it over, get six and seven ready so I can put more black on. Now you can do any background color you want. If your favorite color is you know, deep aubergine or lime green or, you know, whatever color it is. Just go for it. Just go for it. This is not meant... You pick your own colors, right? You pick your own colors when you're doing your, your own quilting. So you don't have to worry about what colors I'm picking. And... You know, you pick from what you have too, right? Like, if you don't have black in your stash, because there's some people that just don't quilt with black. They just, you know, it's not their, it's not their color, not their color choice. That's okay. Okay, now, we're turning it over. So this is all nicely, nicely carved out. All working nice. So I take my next piece. Uh, and it was going to be more black. I'm hoping it's not a solid black because I already got solid black in there. Yeah, I've got two solids. I don't need another one. Ooh, let's get some ones with spots. This has spots. I don't know if you can see that really well. Let me get, the, let me get this off and salvage off. And I want to go a little bit past. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now, you've heard me rip it, right? Because I just ripped for straight of grain instead of actually sewing it. Okay, now we're going to come in and quickly do six. a quarter inch past and now we're going to finish up and do seven I'm just going to push it back basically this is what you would do if you had an ironing board you would have it would be so so press trim so press trim that you would develop that rhythm very quickly and it your work would look perfect you know, so that's something to, cons you know, to consider too. I'm just finger pressing because we're in front of a camera and, you know, it shouldn't take forever. But that's how you would do this, right? I'm just going to line this up and make a little snip right here. There. And then just rip for straight of grain. Lay this down on top. Just have a little bit left overhang. <laughs> And now we'll do that. and make sure that's all in place. Yes, it is. There. Oops. Okay. There we go. So we're kind of on our way here doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep going with this and I'll meet you back here for the ta-da moment. So here is block one of Rippling Goose. That's the picture that's in the header of the Facebook group and the YouTube channel right now. And when I made this, I made 35 of these. 
because I was making a crib quilt or an oversized lap quilt. Actually, my crib quilts are a little bit big. They're more for, they're kind of a cross between going in from a crib to a toddler bed, but they will work as a lap quilt. So I forgot to take the actual measurements of these, but you make 35 of these. Now, if you really like this, you can make more or you can make fewer and just make a table runner or, you know, you do you best. So on the bottom of the pattern, it like for part one, it'll tell you which colors go where in which spots. And same with part two and part three, right? So part four is where we start to all sew them all together and they kind of come together in a cohesive unit. Um, one of the things that when we were filming, I didn't happen, was what happens when your fabric flips, right? Now, what you do is you've shortened your stitch length, of course. So now these are little tiny stitches and you're like, I can hardly see them. And my stitch ripper can hardly get under them. You only stitch rip the part that's been flipped. Like as you start, the sometimes the fabric will flip back on itself. If I run across these in future ones when we're doing these, I will show you what I'm talking about. Or I might try to make a mistake on purpose so I can show you how to fix them. The longest one here is the yellow. And that's not really problematic because as you're putting it under the needle, you can hold it under both sides so you you don't have that flipping. But some of the other ones, yeah, they flip because you're too, your hands are too far away from them. But uh, anyways, I'm going to get this a little closer. I did my stay stitching around the outside edge. Now I'm going to pick off the paper before I sew it to the next block. So that'll make my assembly easier because all of these edges now are biased. So I put my stay stitching in and I'm going to show you, I'm going to get my cameraman to show you this little mistake here. I know we're not supposed to show each other mistakes, but do you see it? Okay. Right there in that corner, I am out. I don't have enough fabric to quite cover the entire corner. So I put a patch on and the patch will be within the quarter inch seam allowance. So when I go to sew this on to my next block, you're not going to see this, right? Because you can do patching on these as well, right? Like, like a lot of people forget that if it doesn't quite go across the seam allowance, you just patch it. Just patch it, put a little bit of extra fabric there, and then that way, you know, you're, you're going to have a good seam inside your quilt and it's not going to start fraying right away. Um, the other thing you might consider too is using just a drop of free check if your seams are just a little on the shy side of being a full quarter inch or because technically you only need an eighth of an inch but to have strength and if you're making a crib quilt you need that strength. So. But that's pretty much all for me. I'll be, we'll be doing the next block part er, of this for the next two weeks. This is block one. We'll do block two and three in the following Fridays. That's Free Pattern Fridays. So I hope you have a fabulous week ahead. I really do. This was a lot of fun. And it kind of reminded me about all the fun memories I was thinking of when I was making this for my granddaughter. And she wasn't born yet and I was, you know, all excited about this new little baby coming into my life. So anyways, here you go. I hope you have a great week. Okay, you take care. Bye. My husband and I would like to thank you for watching today. We're so happy about the way our channel has grown and we just want to wish you so well in your journey along with us. Please like, share and subscribe and tell your friends. Now, the next thing is this quilt. We are wondering if you guys would like this quilt as a free sew along on this channel this fall, this coming fall, winter. We were kind of thinking that this one would be really fun to do. We could do it in a larger size or a smaller size. It's up to you, but this one was a lot of fun to make and it's all, it, it lends itself to being hand stitched, but you can also do this on a sewing machine as well. So let us know in the comments below. Remember, share, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Okay, have a great week ahead. Bye.